Thanks, Bill. Uh, it was a grim warning from the UK Ovarian Cancer Foundation that causes a, a bit of a stir in medical circles this morning. There's a new study out saying that more and more women are mistaking ovarian cancer for bloating. And there was quite a conversation online in some of the, the medical circles. And you know what? Any news mm. is not just confined to the UK when we have something like this. It is something that is worldwide. So uh, we have someone joining us right now from CEO, the CEO of Ovarian Cancer Canada, Elizabeth Baugh, joins us Good right morning. now to put some, uh, some context to this. Good morning. So yeah. how do we allay the fears? Because something like this, as Kev says, it picks up so quickly now. Yes. So people think, oh my gosh, I'm bloated. Do I have ovarian cancer? What is the causal correlation to that symptom? So I think what's important to remember is is that the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer are vague and they mimic the symptoms of many more common less deadly diseases. Ovarian cancer is the most serious women's cancer and takes the lives of five Canadian women every day. Mm -hmm. But what's important to think about is how long you've had the symptom. If it's a new symptom and it persists more than three weeks you should talk to your doctor about it. And it's also a combination of symptoms. Indeed. So what are some of those apart from bloating? So apart from bloating, frequent urination, uncomfortable digestion, eating and being full before you've really eaten your whole meal. Mm. Something like that that's new to you and persists again three weeks, you should talk to your family doctor about it. And when you say they're vague, one of the, I guess one of the problems is we still don't know everything we need to know about ovarian cancer. We hear so much about breast cancer and, and new studies and new, but, but ovarian cancer is, is a killer and, and exactly. we know it is, but we still don't know enough about it. That's right. And there's been a, a really gross underinvestment in research for ovarian cancer and we're hoping to change that, but it is difficult to detect. There is no early diagnosis or screening test and it's difficult to treat because it's many subtypes of are there's, cancer. Do you know, are there studies in Toronto? Is Princess Margaret, for instance, doing Oh, indeed, studies? there is great research going on in Toronto and across the country but the investment is too small and we're working on getting the federal government to invest more. The shocking thing that I was reading also Kev when you brought it to our attention was the fact that a lot of women are self-diagnosing uh, themselves as let's say they need to go on a gluten-free diet or something like that where they let the symptoms continue and think I'm just going to change my di diet because it's all about the aesthetics and they want that that swelling mm -hmm. to go down. We do often find when women come to our organization that they have been misdiagnosed for some time. Urinary tract infection, oh, it's the symptoms of menopause. And, you know, we're very busy in our daily lives and we often put the care of those we're looking after ahead of our own care. So what we want to just remind women is new symptom, talk to your doctor and be aware of your family history. If you have a family history of breast or ovarian cancer, you should be mindful. Is it a blood test or do they have to do something a little bit more invasive? There is, there's no single test. The blood test that people speak about is the CA125 test. It is a tumor marker. So it is positive for other kinds of tumor that aren't malignant. So it's mm -hmm. a combination of tests. It's not easy to detect right. uh, in a simple doctor's visit. It requires ultrasound, um, et cetera. Thank All right, Elizabeth, you. thank you very much for, for helping enlighten us and reminding us as well that, you know, when, when we support cancer research, one of the things we have to keep in mind is ovarian cancer. Elizabeth Baugh. Yeah. And be advocates for our own health.